and cheat sheet to to do this kind of testing. Uh, there's there's no point in working around a blacklist filter or something. If if you, if if the server will return a less than symbol or or anything that's you can start building XSS on. Uh, you should assume that it's vulnerable and you should fix it. So, so that brings us to is taking these tests and integrating them throughout our entire secure SDLC and, mo and using them during a compilation and at our integration phases as part of AMP build tasks or whatever else. Um, so whenever, anytime you, know, you compile the program, you just run through the test, make sure nothing gets outputted back that you want and that you don't want. And uh, so here's like a Java example. Selenium will, out, will export your HTML uh, test to, to Java. And that's, that's what our test looked like. Uh, it's really simple. You could fire these off to developers. They could integrate it into their integration tests. And, and you can see the Selenium click where it has the XPath right there. So that's, that's the XPath for the test. Yeah. And th this is actually, you, hold on for a second before you change it, because yeah. this is the only thing we have from the test. So this yeah. is basically uh, what we were going to show you, except in Java, right? So for those of you in the audi audience who uh, can read Java, this might help a little bit more than even our demo. So yeah, what we're doing is opening the awesome HTML, and then we're going to delete whatever cookie was set before as part of our uh, comprehensive test. And then we're just going to type into the name, uh, name field, uh, document.cookie equals name equals XSS, when it expires, uh, what's its path, etc. And then we're going to do a click, and the click uh, clicks in the X path for the, the button that's labeled chat. You can do more, uh, more specific uh, X paths, uh, but this is uh, just for simplicity to show. And then we verify that we received the cookie from that, and then we delete it. And it shows in Selenium, as you run it, which one's passed, which one's failed. So, so And anybody can do this with the tool itself, because it's like play, you know, stop, et cetera. So it's like running a debugger, you know, really simple. And uh, so, so, so the thing to take away, though, is developers can make this work. Um, if you don't use Java, there's, there's C Sharp, there's Perl, PHP. Uh, Python and Ruby, you could export these, these tests to. So whatever your language you're developing in, you can run these tests against. And the, the best thing about using XPath is your tests are now portable. Uh, there's multiple open source uh, software and commercial solutions that implement XPath. And uh, we, we had Tom Strachner from Sensic. Uh, we wanted him to come, come here and show how the XPath, uh, the XPath Im implementation in the uh, Sensic Hailstorm works. But he was sick and couldn't make it. So everything's failed so far, but fail yeah. is good. <laughs> Epic fail. <laughs> so there's other ways of using XPath. Um, uh, we mentioned Selenium and WebDriver already, obviously. But uh, um, there's other definitely cool ways that you have to check out. Uh, other places in the lifecycle that you can do it in uh, that XPath can help. Maybe you can't use the same exact expressions, but uh, that's kind of like the ultimate goal. Uh, in the case of like PMD, which is the project mess detector, it's a it's like an inspection engine. So it's kind of like a static source code analyzer, but it really is just a static checker like link or like uh, lint, not like XML lint, like the actual lint in uh, C. So P PMD is like lint for Java. There's a JS lint and other ones, but PMD is uh, probably the best and well known. Um, and it does support customization with XPath. And there are people who have written uh, security checking tools for PMD, which is an open source tool, uh, runs at the command line, so you could run it as part of like an ant task. And it also runs uh, in IDE. So if you're in Eclipse and you want to uh, you know, s inspect your code while you're actually typing it, it'll let you know right away that you've made a mistake. And uh, that's, a, that's a great tool for finding certain vulnerabilities like SQL injection. Um, and there's, there's some wrappers for that. We talk about it on our website, and I think it's GDS Security. Uh, I forget the name of the person who wrote it. I apologize, but uh, it wasn't Justin Clark. We just found out the other night yeah. that it, w it wasn't him. But uh, it was somebody at GS Security who, who wrote a SQL injection rule set. Uh, I think it is in XPath for PMD. 
Um, web application scanners, we just mentioned, like, it would be nice if they supported XPath and you could take all of the data from Selenium or WebDriver or another tool and kind of just make it work with, uh, with web application security scanners. So start with open source and then kind of, like, move into a commercial product, right? Like, that's the, that's the kind of idea. Can you think of other places that it might work in the development cycle? Uh, anybody? Well, we'll address them on the next few slides then. Um, <coughs> so, the Selenium examples are table driven, but they could also be uh, script, data driven, uh, or capture replay. Um, ideally, you want to get 100% automation. Um, I know that that uh, that some people think that automation costs a lot of money. Um, and in these cases, these are all open source tools, and so um, that reduces the cost. Also, the complexity of these tools is a lot lower than quality testing tools used to be. And so, people used to say that automation took up like you know 50, 60 or percent or more of the development budget, and that's just not true today. So uh, that's one thing that we'd like to debunk. Um, it's it's definitely something that you need to look at. Uh, the context-driven school uh, basically is one of the people uh, test development or sorry test-driven development. TDD, if you've heard of that, or behavior-driven development, uh, these concepts it want to include testing a lot more uh, in the life cycle. And so uh, I, I think that uh, they're, they're slowly winning, at even, even in classically like waterfall type shops. So what's good about this? Uh, okay, the old concepts are new. Uh, everything used to be script-driven, like in the 80s and 90s. Um, the first language that I used for testing, like quality testing, that I was familiar with was Tickle. Uh, lots of different people used this. It was big inside Cisco, and like there was like a whole conundrum between uh, you know San Jose Cisco, which ran like mostly Tickle and Perl, and then like Austin, who ran like Python. Uh, NIST uh, came out with one extension to Tickle, even to do to to help quality testing even further for script-driven testing, called Expect. This was used for a lot of quality testing stuff back in the day. Uh, they had one module or like one program that it shipped with called Auto Expect. I used to use this a lot. It basically like wrote the code for you. Like it, it's a very cool type of like way of programming. Um, I, I I always wondered where is Auto Ruby because um, a lot of people compare Tickle to Ruby as kind of like being very similar. I don't know if you've experienced that, but. Uh, uh, you know, where, where is Auto Ruby? But I guess we've kind of abandoned script-driven approach to quality testing anyways, and we've kind of moved on to uh, some newer stuff. Next slide. <laughs> so this is like, uh, this is the holy grail of like uh, web automation testing. Can you web test? Um, they have a capture replay part, but um, it's called like web recorder or something. But I don't really suggest using it. I suggest just getting your hands dirty right away and uh, doing some data-driven tests. Uh, they have some examples, some screenshots on the website that you, you should check out. Um, it basically runs as an extension to Ant, Ant Builder, and uh, all the tests are written in XML, and so you already got that going. And you can put XPath expressions inside that XML to, you know, do all the, the clicks and on-clicks and whatever DOM-based functionality or other functionality you want. Um, since it's so close to the, the integration, uh, and it's so fast because it's an application driver, it's, it's ideal for 100% automation in, in terms of testing. So basically, like, you could load, like, an Excel spreadsheet with every single type of fault injection that you want. Like, you could throw Arsenic's XSS sheet sheet in there and, uh, and just, like, like, with a few lines of XML, like, it's not even programming code, it'll just load it and uh, send it to all the XPath expressions that you want and basically completely test your entire website for security testing purposes or quality testing purposes or whatever you want. I mean, you decide what the injections are and, and what you want to see back. Um, why all these tools? Um, I suggest just using all the tools if you can, you know, whatever you have time for to play with. Uh, you know, you can mix and match tools. Uh, there's also things called domain-specific languages, which are starting to come around. I know a lot of programmers want to start using them. It's a mix between, a, like, a tiny language and, um, like, you know, not really a language at all, like a script or whatever. So it's something like in between, right? It's, it's the difference between like uh, Ruby and, S and C is huge, but like, you know, th that's coming like a little bit closer. Uh, it, you know, it will be more in the future. Um, XPath is really a specialized language, and so it's one way of describing things. Um, you know, you can use it between tools like we talked about, and we can make it work in different parts of the life cycle. So, uh, Let's see, uh, Ryan Gerard and Ramya of, uh, of uh, Symantec had introduced the concept of test reputation-based systems or vulnerability reputation-based systems. Um, basically, 
it was seeing what the testers, what they found, uh, put it against the developers. So it created two, two goals for testers and developers. Testers to find more bugs among their peers and for developers to write better code.